For the head shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord, as the waters cover the sea. Isaiah 11 9. Welcome to the hour of encounter with Christ. Here is the mandate of true teaching for liberation, healing, healing deliverance, total freedom, freedom from sin, sin Satan, Satan, and, and ignorance. ignorance. The spirit of truth flows with every word that proceeds out of the mouth of the man of God. Pastor Bayo Oduayemi of the World International Christian Center, also known as Wonders Chapter, prepare your heart for the word of righteousness. Sit, listen, and be blessed. Spirit says the Lord. To him it don't be the glory. Father, we say thank you because your word are amen and they are yes. We give you all the glory because your word is alive. And your word has never failed. We thank you for the testimonies your word has provided. Father, be glorified in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray that your word will come down like water. Make plants to board. Transform life. Produce testimonies in the name of Jesus. By the powers of your word, people regain their inheritance. By the powers of your word, people receive healings. They are liberated. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Praise the Lord. I want us to meet in the book of First Peter, chapter number 5. 1 Peter chapter number 5. I want to read from verse number 7. 1 Peter chapter number 5. Reading from verse number 7. Casting all your cares upon him, for he careth for you. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Verse number nine. Whom resisted first in faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. Praise the Lord. Whom resisted first in the faith. First it says that be sober, be vigilant because your adversary. Bible recognize only one adversary. It say your adversary, the devil. So you should resist him. When they say witches kill somebody, when they say wizard kill somebody, when they say um, um, the abolica people kill somebody, Bible may not necessarily say that. Bible says you adversary the devil. devil Bible recognizes devil that he is the only adversary you have. But devil cannot walk. He can't walk. Unless he walk through some human being. Praise the Lord. He can walk through the witches. He can walk through the wizard. He can walk through even assassinator. You can walk through them. But when you resist the person behind the action, that's the devil, you'll be in victory. You have to resist the devil. I've explained to us in this teaching that you may not see devil coming in a fearful way like a monster, you may not see him that way. Devil comes in form of anything that is evil. Anything evil, that's where devil comes. It comes in form of anything that is evil. It comes in form of fear. Devil comes and manifests 
through poverty. Therefore, come take people's life through sickness, through accident, through attack. That's how they would take people's life. But when it come through those means and you are able to resist, you will have victory. You'll be victorious. Everyone will not come in the way some people expect. And I want you that have a mindset that uh, a particular man is my enemy. I want to change your mindset through the word of God. A particular man is my enemy, my stepmother, my stepfather, my this, my that, my co-worker. I heard of a man who has gotten to top of his career. Anytime he's sick like this, he believes that people in his office, they are after him. Because he has gotten to the top, somebody else wants to occupy the place. So he lives his life in fear. Ha! Hey! Anytime he's happy to something, he believes there's people from his office. Tell the man to deal with the fear. If he deal with that fear, if he deal with the devil, if he deal with that fear, he will have death with devil. Because fear itself is a snare. When you succeed in resisting fear, in fact, you are a victorious man. Many people talent, many people gifting cannot come out because they are yet to conquer war against fear. Many people are talented. Many people are brilliant. Many people are intelligent. But because of fear, that talent is not coming up. Many have died untimely death because of fear. Because of fear. Untimely death. They went to any grave because of fear. So the devil comes in several ways. He come in form of fear, anxiety. That's why the Bible says, you know, one of the one of the sources of fear is care. Care. When I say care, you have ah, how do we get this? How do we get that? How do we pay my children's school fee? How do we do this? How well are we going to eat tomorrow? Bible now says, instead of having that, and therefore we come through your life now, say, cast that fear. Cast that fear upon the law. Let the Lord carry that fear. When you carry that fear, when, when you allow Jesus to carry that fear, you will be attressed. Therefore, we will not be able to enter your life. I've told you, a lot of people are on different mountains of prayer. They go from places to places, all because of fear. Like percentage of prayer that a lot of people are praying. Some who don't have prayers. You know, some people have seen life as warfare. They have seen life as warfare. No. Jesus said, peace be unto you. If you have been passing through a life of war, I decree the peace of Jesus to your life. The chastisement of your peace is upon Jesus. So you have peace in your mind. In the name of Jesus. Fear is terrible. And let me tell you, I've told you, fear is just too numerous. It's many. Some the fear of tomorrow. Some the fear of old age. Many, many fear. And when you are fearing According to the Bible, you are opening door for enemy to come in. Let me tell you, poverty is another weapon of enemy by which devil appear. You know, when, when you are poor, your dream, your vision may lack expressions. When you are poor. Because poverty is not just absence of money. I'm telling you, poverty is more than absence of money. Me, poverty remove your self pride. You find it got to actualize yourself. You become negatively humble. 
There is positive um, uh, humbleness. But when you are poor, you become negatively humble. You serve people that are supposed to respect you. You serve them because they have money. You may, have, you may know more than they know. But because you are poor, that's why it's not good to be poor. Poverty erodes your self-worth. When you are poor, you lack self-worth. The value you're supposed to have for yourself. Let me tell you, when you have self-worth for yourself, it's not necessarily pride. When you have self-worth for yourself, and you are downgrading somebody else, that's when it's become pride. But there's nothing wrong in having a self-worth. You know what you want. You know the quality of stuff that God has put in you. It's not pride. It's not. It's not. But when somebody is poor, all these self-worth, they disappear. Do you know if you are poor, even when you go to people to talk, it affects your talking. It affects your presentation. That's why poverty is not just absence of money. It goes down, down to your senses. And when it gets your senses, it's not that you are poor alone, you, know, you are poverty conscious. And you see yourself as nobody. A lot of people and destiny has been attacked by poverty. And that's why one of the things you must learn on that teaching is how to resist poverty. When you resist poverty, you are equally resisting the devil. Praise the Lord. You are equally resisting the devil when you receive poverty. Don't allow poverty to determine who you are. Don't allow poverty to determine who you are. Let what God calls you determine who you are. Don't let your pocket determine the person you are. Praise the Lord. Paul said, we appear poor, but we are making people rich. Look at, look at that. Look at that. Look at that quality. Look at the world. They say, we look poor, but we are making people rich. So, those people, they may lack money, but they know they have something more than money. They say, we are poor, but we are making people rich. Look at, look at the apostle at the beautiful gates. They saw a lame man. The man was looking at them, perhaps to get money. I think the book of Acts chapter 3. He was looking at them to get money. But you know what the, what the apostle said? I think Peter and John, they said, silver and gold we have none. But they said, such as we have. Look at that statement. I love that statement. They said, silver and gold we have none. But they know they still have something. Praise the Lord. So those people... Confidently, they can reject poverty. You know, silver and gold, we have no, but we are not poor. We still have something. Silver and gold, we have no. But, he said, look on us. He said, look on us. Silver and gold, we have no. But such as we have. Can you be bold as a Christian? Even when you don't have money, you know you still have something. He said, such as we have. In the name of Jesus, rise up. Uh, Peter and John may use it for healing. You can use your own for your dream. You don't have to be limited to the money in your pocket. I'm saying this because devil have used the, defi uh, when, 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 uh, the, the definition of poverty that is based only on money to kill a lot of destiny. People define they define prosperity, they define blessing only in terms of cash. No, no. No. Look at the ministry of Jesus Christ. He was about to feed 5,000. They said 200 penny worth of money cannot do this. He said, however, make them see that. They said there is a lad here with five loaves of bread and two fishes. There was, money cannot do what they achieved there, but Jesus knew what to do. That's still a form of prosperity. 
So in this teaching, you will learn a lot. I'm telling you. And I want you to please be keeping to it, listening to it, make sure you are practicing it at home. Resist the devil. Some people, devil in their life is lack. Somebody else, devil in his life is sickness. You know when you are sick, sickness has never come to be your friend. He has come to limit your potential. And he will not just limit your potential, he wants to put an end to you. So if the devil is in your life by sickness, I set you free in Jesus' name. Because Jesus has borne your grief. That grief in your life is a shadow. And I command it to give way. Amen. Your body responds Amen. to healing and you are liberated Amen. in Jesus' name. Amen. A lot of homes have scattered because the devil in that home is poverty. The father is poor, the mother is poor, their young daughter started becoming wayward, their boy, you know, there was no understanding between husband and wife. Because devil has entered that house and is present there by poverty. Satan is present in some life by sickness. He's present in some life by fear. He's present in some people by anxiety. He's present in some people by anger. Anger has destroyed a lot of lives. But irrespective of satanic appearance, you can resist him. You can resist him. Resist the devil and he shall flee. Resist him, he shall flee. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Resist the devil, he shall flee from thee. He's bound to flee. Satan is bound to live when you resist him. Resist him. He must flee. And the Bible says, how do you resist the devil? Who resists him steadfast in faith. And what is faith? What does the word of God say? Look at the testimony of our dear brother, Brother Shina. He said, when they called him for that job, banking job, you know banking job has age limits. Immediately they call him, his friend are calling. After all, his friend are calling him to his reach now. Am I lying? But devil doesn't want him to receive the miracle. We tell him, banking job at this age. But quickly he said, the Lord is my justification. Praise the Lord. And when before he's in place, when before he's in place for you, people don't no longer look at your credential, they look at Jesus' credentials in your life. That's it. As a Christian, you have two credentials. Your personal one and that of Jesus in your life. But I will advise you that you stick to that of Christ. Let me tell you, as simple as that thought is, banking job at this age, therefore is about to come in. It looks so simple. It looks like an ordinary suggestion. Are you getting it now? But therefore is about to come in. He's trying to come in. So you can lose that favor. But thank God, he was able to resist him by saying, the Lord is my justification. Let me tell you, it's as simple as that to resist the devil. You have work and your body is aching. And the devil is telling you, you know you have overwork. Ah, the work of this week is terrible. And you're about to force it. Tell the sickness to go. Even if you have worked for two weeks, Jesus has borne your grief. There is no legal right for devil to put grief in your body again. Praise the Lord. Resist the devil. You stand firm. You stand firm on faith. And the faith we are preaching is the faith of what Jesus had already achieved. I want you to know. Faith of what? What Jesus had already what achieved is the work that is completed. Amen. Praise the Lord. You stand firm on the work that Jesus has accomplished. Let me tell you, it's not your prayer that will heal you. No, this is contrary to what James said. He said the prayer 
of this, uh, the, the prayer of faith that saved the sick. That healed the sick. Hear this. Jesus has borne the grief. He was striped. And that, was it. that one is just irreversible. You can't reverse it. You can't cancel it. If there is sickness in your body, just tell that sickness to go. By his stripe, I am healed. I'm not going to be healed. Praise the Lord. Some people say, when I say by stripe, I'm healed. When I say, you say it 27 times or 28 times. You may be healed. Because it costs you 27 times to break your own belief. It's not saying it that healed you. Jesus had healed you. You are only testifying to what Jesus has done. What did I say? You are only what? Testifying. You are confirming. At times, confession of faith means to confirm. Confession of faith means to say the same thing with God. Are you getting it now? God said in heaven, he has declared you righteous. Are you getting it now? I will now say, I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. You are only confirming what God has said. You get it? Your own is to confirm. When you say by his poverty, I am rich. Jesus became poor for me to be rich. And I'm by his poverty, I am rich. I reject any form of manifestation of poverty. Children in the house. You know when your mom and dad lack, therefore we tell you too that you are poor. Am I lying? Therefore we tell you that you have inherited your poverty. Tell the devil to go to hell. I have parents. Thank God I have parents. But my parents are not my shepherd. God is the shepherd of myself and my parents. You know, when, when your parents are poor, the, uh, the so-called poor, poor bag, poverty background, when you come from that, then we pass a message to you that you too, you know you are poor. They've been judging you based on your parents. But you have a responsibility to shift your belief from the fact that because your parents are poor, you have to be poor. Are you getting out? You now shift it to Jesus and keep on declaring that by his poverty I'm rich. Are you getting it now? I refuse to accept poverty because my parents are poor. No, I refuse to accept it. Therefore, you will not bring poverty to my house. Therefore, you will not bring poverty to this house. You will not give us poverty in this house. I reject poverty. In the name of Jesus, I say, no, we will not be poor. Because by his poverty, we are rich. Then you tell, the, you tell yourself, God has given me power to get wealth. I have the power of God. That is the brain, the wisdom, the intelligence, the, 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 the genuine, positive, imaginative thinking. I got the power to make wealth. And before you are saying that, idea will start ruling him. Idea will start ruling him. Because God has promised that he will lead you in the path of righteousness, not even for your sake. For his own name's sake, he will lead you in the path of righteousness. And you know Jesus is our righteousness. So when God says, I will lead you in the path of righteousness, he is leading you in the path of Jesus Christ. You know, in this assembly, our work, our major belief is on what Jesus had already accomplished. Praise the Lord. Look at that project, the building. Let me tell you, you should see beyond the money. See beyond the offering. See beyond the tithe. God is our sufficiency. We are not banking on what we can see. But we are banking on what we cannot see. Because whatever appears is temporal. Whatever has not appeared is eternal. Amen. Several times I have told you that you stop judging yourself by what you see. Stop judging yourself by what you say. Don't judge yourself by the quality of your shirt. Even if you buy it for 100,000. You are more than that. Don't judge yourself by what you put on. You are greater than that. Because greater is it that is you that in that is in the world. At times when I'm praying, I do tell the devil that devil, you may pretend to be powerful. But my own Bible says Jesus has spoiled principalities and power and he made a publisher of them, triumphing over them gloriously. 
That's Colossians 2.15. At times I will be telling, I say, devil, no matter how you pretend to be powerful, the prince of this world is George. I behold the devil falling like lightning from heaven. Praise the Lord. I wonder in those days of little faith or little understanding, let me use the word little understanding. We do believe that we have to pray. And when we pray, our prayer has to penetrate the roof. So before you get to the Lord. Have you ever heard before that they say some, somebody is, he is collecting your prayer? Have you ever heard that word? They tell you that a demon is collecting your prayer. Have you ever, I don't say, I just don't worry. Have you ever heard it? Hello, church. Hello, church. Let's, let's, come, let's come down a bit. Father. Oh, no. Some want to talk to his father. I mean, the biological father, the biological son. Mrs. Babalola, Daniel wants to talk with you. And he says, as he's talking, making requests, somebody is collecting it. <laughs> is it possible? That, that, was, that was in Old Testament. But now in New Testament, we are not just a servant of God, we are the sons of God. As many as believed them, he gave them power to become what? The son of God. We are son of God. There is no, no, let me tell you, nobody coming between us and God. Devil don't have a place there. He doesn't. But I'm sure your prayer is being delayed. You check your own belief and reduce it. Because your own belief might have said, you haven't got it. You haven't got it. Start testifying. That sister was here to say, I know what has been stolen. God is restoring. That's faith. That's faith. I read the testimony of servant of God and the woman. They said that his son was dead and they put his son in the mug. And he was called. And he asked, he and his wife have to travel to where the son is. But he said as they were going, they felt like having grief. But he said, no, I refuse to grieve. As they were driving to that place, they said, no, we refuse to grieve. No, we refuse to grieve. And when they got there, the boy came out after five hours in the so-called mortuary. They said, we refuse to grieve. We refuse. We refuse to grieve. Just as born a grief. Devil will appear like angels of light. And it, at times when he appears, they think look normal. But they are not normal. You know, poverty can be so normal to you. You keep on accommodating and dealing it instead of resisting it. Praise the Lord. Have you, do you know at times unconsciously we accommodate poverty? You have 500 naira and you do all the mathematics of that 500 naira. All the mathematics of the world on 500 naira. As you are doing the, is it board master we normally do? Bracket of multiplication, Abby. You move from there, you go to Pythagoras theorem. On 500 naira. You are racking your brain. I want to buy. I want to buy this. I want to buy this. Then, you see, you go to the Amortonus equation again. Abby? <laughs> on how much? On what? On 500 naira. Instead of saying, no, God is my sufficiency. I refuse to be limited to money. God is my sufficiency. My need has supply according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. You know when your money remains 500 naira, they don't want you to care. You start doing mathematics, you start doing calculation, you start doing this, and you are going down. You are not going up. You are going down. You think you are going up financially, you are going down. Praise the Lord. And to make the matter worse, you get to where you buy them something, the price increase. The price has just increased. Ah! Oh, you get there, you are. Oh, oh. <laughs> if it is for food, tell the devil, go to her. God satisfy my mouth with good things. I'm abundantly supplied in the name of Jesus. That's how to resist the devil. It looks so simple. There's pain in your body. 
I think about five days ago, there, uh, he, he, my ankle, the left ankle, there was a serious pain there. As if somebody has dislocation. You know, when, when something like that, you'll be tempted to just be getting uh, ointment, either rub, you start rubbing it. Start... Which one is easy? Pain, go. And which one are you buying rub? Which one is easy? One is, is as a pain, go. <laughs> it looks so simple. It's not going in my name. The pain is going in the name of Jesus. It's not in my name. It's in the name of Jesus. It must respond. Every pain in your life, they go in the name of Jesus. Yeah. If there's anybody under the oppression of poverty, I speak in the authority of Jesus because Jesus has become poor for you. You are free from poverty in the name of Jesus. If there's anybody you have been struggling to get something, you, you have been denied, you have been denied, you have been struggling to get, you have been denied. Now, I speak in the authority of Jesus that the faith force of God will start speaking for you. In the name of Jesus, concerning that thing you need, they will no longer look at who you, who, what you have, but they look at Jesus who is in you. In the name of Jesus. And every other thing you have been struggling to get by money, those things are given to you for free. Yeah. I said they are given to you for free. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. You have nothing to do with poverty. You are free. In the name of Jesus. You have nothing to do with sickness. It's not your portion. You are free from all manners of diseases and afflictions. In the name of Jesus. And they say it comes through food. That food that you ate in the dream is never a poison, it's a communion. In the name of Jesus. Because we have a record in the Bible that angel wake, they wake up Elijah to eat from sleeping. So, it is not demon that gave you food, these angels. And so it can never be a poison for you. In the name of Jesus, you are heady and you are sound. And there is anybody under the sound of my voice that is under fear and anxiety. God does not give you your spirit of fear to fear. In the name of Jesus, you are set free. Amen. Fear, go! Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. you have the confidence in the Lord. It is well with you. I pray that as you are hearing my voice, just say, Jesus, you are my Lord and my Savior. And you become a righteous man. And because you are now a righteous man, the righteousness of God exalts you. Yeah. You will no longer be stagnated again. Because Bible says, righteousness exalts a nation. You are exalted. Yeah. In that office, in that job, financially, spiritually, you are exalted. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. You are confessed just as your Lord and Savior. It's your safety. It's your defense. You are your also you are preserved. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. You are blessed.